Hi, I'm Melissa, Free Range Psychic, and um, I'm here to give you another video, my third YouTube video. And I asked my spirit guides what they wanted this one to be uh, about. <laughs> and this one, it's been giving me some difficulty because I have tried to make this a few times. Uh, it's not... Um, easy uh it's not an easy subject it's interesting though a lot of interesting information uh whether um <laughs> it, it it is true or not uh, this is the information that they gave me um seems to ring true so this is about vladimir putin and as we start this reading let's surround ourselves with white light and protect ourselves from his energy because it's very very dark and um, we want to be safe. So this was really surprising. Um, but it makes sense. Um, so they showed me a lifetime. It's in the 17th century, which is, is the 1600s. During the time of Louis XIV. And um, his, he, uh, Putin apparently was um, a duke, uh, and his name, and uh, forgive me, I'm really glancing down in my notes there, uh, was Francois Henri de Montmorency, Duke of Luxembourg. And he lived, uh, he, he was born in 1628, and he died in 1698. So this is really interesting to me because I had read a book. A few months ago, um, it's it's this book. Um, you can see my <laughs> where I uh, mark the pages here. City of Light, City of Poison, Murder, Magic, and the First Police Chief of Paris by Holly Tucker. And this is an amazing book. It's called Historical Fiction because it was really taken almost verbatim uh, from uh, the, the notes of um, the police chief, Le Rene, R-E-Y-N-I-E, -E, of Paris. Um, and uh, it uh, is pretty accurate, I think. Um, I know Holly Tucker, I listened to an interview when she went to Paris and she uh, was able to look at the actual manuscripts and talk to some historians. Um, this is a, a really dark time in our uh, the history of uh, our world and, and especially France. Um, it was a time of great uh, paradoxes and polarities and great corruption. Um, Louis XIV, you know, he was called the Sun King and he um, apparently um, wanted to transform Paris into the new Rome. So La Rene, the police chief, um, was given the task to do this. And um, as time went on, became involved in this huge um, uh, intrigue um, of um, poison and uh, murder and um, black magic <laughs> um, and uh, plots of uh, poisoning and uh, um, some were actually successful, um, but uh, and um, not the one where the, the intention was to poison Louis XIV, but there was a plan in place. So um, Putin <laughs> uh, apparently um, requested the services of somebody who was very much embroiled in this scandal um, called Adam Corset. Or, no, no, it's correct. Sorry, I, and that's not the French pronunciation. Um, who was known as Lesage, also, who was um, uh, a um, he was described as a uh, charlatan, uh, a longtime charlatan. Now, he would have been actually arrested previously, um, uh, sentenced to death for um, nefarious crimes, but a lady of influence uh, interceded and got him freed. So uh, <laughs> there was a, oh my gosh, a whole um, viper's nest of things that were happening. Um, 
and it was in it, it, this is in of itself was a big paradox and polarity because the poisoners the people practicing black magic um and offering certain services to uh, the aristocracy were living in the very poorest part of paris paris at that time was extremely dangerous place um uh, louis the 14th was trying to change the nature of Paris. Paris before um, that transformation had been the most one of the most dangerous places I think to live in the world. Um, people were it was like the Wild West <laughs> of, of Europe. Um, there was a, a, a it was disgustingly dirty and filthy. It, there were there was no light, and uh, apparently there were people were getting killed for uh, in fights and um, for, for no reason every day and um, not just with swords as you would imagine or other kinds of things but pistols early uh, the early uh, manifestations of pistols were apparently widely um, available and people were using them and uh, they had replaced swords and um, duels so that surprised me I didn't know the pistols were being used so early so Lorene came to and really changed a lot of that bought light to Paris now, which is why Paris is now known as the city of light, um, and um, uh, enforced ordinances to clean the city up and um, to re uh, Im impose, you know, certain civic um, uh, regulations, which which were effective. So he was quite an amazing man. He was kind of the Mueller of <laughs> that time. I wouldn't be surprised if Mueller was his reincarnation because he was pretty, he was by the book and he uh, was completely honest and completely incorruptible. But juxtaposed to that were um, an extremely corrupt aristocracy and also this group of people that were living, it, it, it's called the Montegro Quarter. Oh gosh, I know I'm botching this up. Um, but hey, read the book. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you can go to Wikipedia too, I'm sure all that information's there. So it's called Impoverished and Godforsaken. It was on the northern outskirts of Paris. And so this this um, uh, population of people in, uh, also involved this, this group of very entrepreneurial, but very, um, I would say very evil uh, kind of sociopaths who uh, provided services for the aristocracy that they couldn't um, uh, find elsewhere and that included women who needed abortions um, uh, women or men who wanted to uh, to access poison women maybe to poison their husbands um, uh, men or women to murder their siblings or their um, parents so they could inherit um, and uh, the, there's one um, part in the book where they talk about um, poisoning a shirt with arsenic as a, as a means to uh, kill, um, I think, a father. <laughs> so um, apparently Luxembourg himself, he uh, requested the services of Lesage to um, re make requests to the devil so that his, uh, he could, um, his wife could die, <laughs> that harm could befall his enemies. Um, and also he wanted his uh, daughter married uh, to a certain um, aristocratic family that would, I think, make their family nearer to the lineage of the, the royalty. Um, and somehow that was being thwarted. And so he, he wanted that too. And um, when Le Rene and the uh, po police of Paris uh, began to unravel um, this whole intrigue of the, the poisoners, um, uh, et cetera, then, um, his name came up because they they tortured them, Lesage and some others, and um, so Luxembourg was implicated. And then the king found out. Now, now Luxembourg, I'll give you a little bit of um, background on him. This uh, uh, Francois Henri de Montmorency, Duke of Luxembourg. He was the Minister of War, very powerful man in France, and he was a, apparently a brilliant general. He. Um, was a lion and uh, nobody wanted really wanted to go against him he, and he he was pretty successful he was called a, a brilliant strategist and um but again another polarity when he was at home when he was not fighting or, or, or commanding his armies he was completely indolent he was lethargic he was um uh indulging himself just did pretty much whatever he wanted to um 
uh, he and his wife are very similar. They would um, attend, um, you know, the, the incredibly decadent uh, kinds of um, uh, uh, balls and, and uh, um, affairs of the, of the royalty and the aristocracy and uh, have sex with whomever they wanted and eat whatever they wanted, whatever. Um, yeah, that was uh, um, uh, Francis, Francis, Francis uh, or Francois. So he um, apparently was born in, you know, he was born into that life and he was a very spoiled child. Um, he was completely indulged as a child and he really felt that the world revolved around him. And he grew up to be a sociopath, according to my guides. Um, and uh, what they told me was he actually loved the bloodshed of war. It was like he would go to a fight to get fed. Um, he would gorge off the, the suffering and the um, slaughter of um, the armies. Yeah, he enjoyed torture. Um, it made him feel very powerful if he could um, either torture his own men for um, possibly spying or torture the enemy to get information. He enjoyed it. He, he was very sadistic. Um, they told me he was extremely amoral and um, he you know, like any good sociopath, or I imagine narcissist also, um, he had no empathy, no compassion, and he um, lived a very rarefied life. Um, it, so I guess that would make him a really excellent commander of armies, right? I mean, it, it's probably really hard to have a conscience when you're um, asking your troops to scorch and burn um, a village or, you know, slaughter uh, the enemy and leave no one um, left un, uh, undead. Yeah, I think that would be a good general. Um, so, but this is an inter another interesting polarity that came up. Apparently, there was a, 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 a part of him that was extremely childlike and, and gullible. And, and this ties back to Lesage. Um, and Lesage was part of this group also that they, they did, uh, of the um, uh, people who were um, uh, doing the poisons and the abortions and that kind of thing, they were also practicing um, black magic. So there were priests involved also um, who would do black masses and um, they would, when, when they were, um, they would entice some women to, have, to give birth and they would do some kind of satanic rite. Um, it's very dark, <laughs> dark stuff. Um, and um, apparently, um, the uh, the uh, Luxem the Duke of Luxembourg was extremely um, uh, attracted to this kind of, of practice. Um, he, he had a gullibility, a childlike wonder, a part of him that just completely dropped his guard um, with with that kind of. Um, a, a belief or thing that those people to him there was there was this mystery and magic and uh, he really uh, was um, very susceptible to being manipulated in that way he believed with all his heart that um, uh, you know their, the, the, their magic would work and their potions would work um, not that they may or may not have but he had no um, discretion in that you know he, he just he was like a child in, in his belief. And um, so interestingly enough, my guides told me that Putin is the same way. He has the same thing. He ha that we see him as this very cold, calculated, sociopathic person, which he is. But there is this part of him that is a child and he is very drawn also to the dark arts and to satanic practices. And he has a lesage, or now I remember, has reincarnated into this life and as his astrologer. So, you know, astrology or any, any occult or magical practice can be used for good or for, for evil and or for dark ego, egotistical practices. However, I know some people don't like the description evil. I believe in evil. Um, uh, and when I say that, I mean uh, any kind of uh, sadistic or in intentional harm. Um, to, to uh, and intent is, is to me evil. That's just what I believe. Um, and I think it's important to be able to name it so that we can help 
uh, protect ourselves and others from it and also you know understand our own shadows but also be aware of the shadows of others because we, we need to um, not be susceptible we need to see like Trump we need to name Trump as what he really is and what his intentions really are I think it's some really important um, and so uh, you know Putin <laughs> has um yes okay back to the the astrologer um yes putin has an astrologer and this is lesage reincarnated so the thing about that is that he he uses astrology in the same way that hitler would have used astrology um you know to decide the best times to act and to not act and um uh, to you know to understand you know um what would uh when the stars are shining on him and you know those kinds of things but he, he he's not a student of astrology as much as he completely gives over his power to this astrologer um and uh so he's very vulnerable that way so he's easily manipulated in that way i thought that was really interesting and my guides wanted to make sure i told you that um so um i i have done uh just privately, you know, kind of try, really being curious about Putin, what what he was like when he was younger, kind of what led him to be who he is, because he is kind of a monster, really, um, in in his actions, um, and uh, he's very, you know, maniacal and brilliant. Um, but but I, I've I've sensed, and my guides have told me that for that that he has this very damaged part of himself when he that he when he was a child uh his father you know was a raging alcoholic and um would beat him and ha had this really um probably i'm sure it was a narcissist also ones in the families um would um uh, this idea of masculinity this very machismo idea of masculinity that putin as a child or vladimir as a child could never really he, he i think his father called him you know like a you're a girl you're weak um, men um, don't cry, men, you know, can take a beating, men are heartless, men, you know, be a man. And I think that he, um, Vladimir probably ran to his mother, and I think uh, his father really scorned him for doing that. And so there's there's this part of, 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 of Putin that um, is very ashamed of, of, of that part of him, of anything that's vulnerable, anything that is soft, anything that is um loving and maternal is um something something to hide and be ashamed of and to punish others for having because that's what his father did to him very insecure i saw him as a, a teenager his face all acne and um his clothes he came from a very poor family you know his clothes all kinds of out of date and and um cheap and it, it, i saw him having crushes on very wealthy girls or girls that were above his um uh I say about but you know we're wealthier had to had um you know uh, in terms of class we're above his class and um uh, being completely scorned by them and so he has this real you know revenge uh, revenge thing uh, towards women um and and a, a, a really deep-seated insecurity so um and that that's really how he sees himself he wants the world to see him as this really powerful masterful leader but he's really still inside the you know acne riddled um uh, uh, uh skinny uh poor um pathetic uh kid that he he felt he was um and uh you know he has he does have some chronic depression because of that it's um uh, so yeah depression yeah, he's he, he is just a chronic uh, low-grade depression so um that is putin's past life or at least one of them uh what happened to luxembourg um was that when Louis the Fourteenth uh, heard about the confessions of Lesage and these other people, then uh, about Luxembourg, uh, he was um, exiled out of Paris. He was imprisoned for for a period of months, actually, which was a big deal because you know you don't really um, aristocracy don't get in prison too easily. They usually get off with most everything, but he, he was really outraged. Um, I think because of the plot 
that he was not that Luxembourg was going to poison him, but he was connected with these people who um, apparently were planning and almost were successful in poisoning him or assassinating him. So, um, but in the end, Luxembourg was um, exiled from from Paris and was never allowed to come back. So he came from very high place, and then he whoa, he fell. <laughs> So um, let's surround ourselves with white light again <laughs> to protect ourselves um, from this very dark energy. But I thought that it was an interesting past life, not an easy one to do and not, and not an easy video to do, especially not for my third one. <laughs> so uh, I hope you um, uh, found that interesting. Let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe uh, to my channel if you do. And um, I do personal readings and um, I will provide a link um, where you can contact me if you want a reading. So um, I hope you have a, a, a great day and uh, I, t I will um, see you the next time, which I think the next time is probably going to be a, another tarot reading on some kind of current subject. I'm not sure uh, what I've, I'll have to ask my, my guides. <laughs> Thank you. Take care.